Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And today's video, I want to show you how to use the pen and path tool. Had this request a couple times, and although I've covered it a little bit in other videos that are more lengthy, I wanted this to be specific to just the pen and path tool. So what I'll go ahead and do is create a new layer, and I generally start with a rough sketch whenever I do almost anything, uh, whether or not I sketch it here in a different program or whatever, but for the sake of this, I'll just sketch it right here, and we'll do something very basic. Uh, we'll just do a lamp, or what I think a lamp looks like, or whatever. Um, so yeah, so just to show you the, uh, you know, versatility of this uh, tool. This is one of the most underused tools, I think, for its ability. Uh, unless you get into really high-end professional work, I don't think you have an option. Uh, you pretty much just have to use this tool. Uh, so that's why I wanted to showcase it here and just say, you know, uh, start using this tool because it's really worth it. It's got a lot of neat features and, and ability. Uh, so there's our basic rough sketch. Forgive me for my crude little lamp there that looks like it's, you know, about 30 years old. I don't even know if they have lamps that look like this anymore. All right, so generally what I'll do is start off with a rough sketch. Then I'll do something like, uh, let's see, layer layer style, color overlay, it's already set to blue because I use it so much, and I just do that to give myself a, a reference, I like a blue line kind of look for my uh, reference sketch. Okay, so pass over here, and the beauty of using these is that they save separately from your layers, which is nice, I uh, give you another level and ability to edit, you get to the pen tool by hitting P on your keyboard, and the way they work is you simply click and then at your next point, uh, which I would say try to get a, as far over to the next change in direction, you can either click around like this, or hit Command Z, Command Alt Z to go back a couple times, or click and pull just a little bit, and now you've got a nice bezier handle and a little bit of curvature to your line. So that's generally how I do it. I'll go to the next point, I'll pull just a little bit, you know, sometimes straight, but very rarely. And uh, go to the next one, repeat this process. So sometimes you got to do a pretty big curvature and you just, you know, click and hold and pull it out until you get there. Um, now, here, if you notice, it went the opposite direction. It tried to make this curvature all the way around. I should have ended the point here. And the way you do that is hold Alt, or I shouldn't say end the point, but you change the uh, bezier of it. Hold Alt, click once, and just repeat the process. So it didn't end the point because it's still connected, but uh, that's something you have to do on some of the changes in, in direction. So like even right here, now keep in mind you also can hit Command and move the points interactively as you're going through the process. And then go to your next uh, change in direction right here. I probably could have made it all the way down to here, but we'll, uh, we'll go with that and repeat the process again. Now here I think I'll have another problem, so I'll hold Alt, click once. Go to the next curvature, pull, hold alt, click once, and repeat that process. It's It almost benefits you to just almost end the uh, bezier almost every time. But there's certain times you don't have to. And quite honestly, you're just going to get a feel for it as you put in the hours with this tool. So now I'm going to go straight up here and finish. And we only need to do half of our shape on something like this. So I'll hold alt, click once. Now keep in mind, when you finish your point, Back at the connecting starting point, you're going to get that little zero or O or whatever that little icon is right there when I hover over it. But also you have the option to finish your point two ways. You can click and you get a straight line, Command Z. Or you can click and pull and get a curvature uh, line all at the same time. So just keep that in mind. For this instance, I only need a straight line, so I'll just click and end it. So now we've created our path. Now you can basically just zoom in here and edit your path and get it just the way you want. Like I said, you really don't have to do it the way that I did there. You could have just went around this object. Well, here I'll show you. Create a new path. And you could have simply went around it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people work this way as well. And they just kind of do this. Sometimes add too many points. Uh, whatever. And you almost just get a very stylized lamp shape right there pretty quickly. I think I like this one better. Uh, but then you can go back and just edit the work. So that's another way to do it. I particularly like to do 
uh, mine like this. Now, once you've deselected it, just remember you go back to the Convert Point tool, and you can also add and subtract points with this. Uh, so we'll go to the Convert Point tool, and you just click on this and go back to editing your work. So now I'll get in here and just clean this up a bit. Like if you notice, I've got a point here. Well, obviously it needs to be a rounded shape if you look at the rough sketch. So we'll just go ahead and adjust that by simply pulling out. Now if you notice, it's changing the curve over here, which I don't want. So hold Alt, grab this point, and now I can control this one individually of the other handle. So I'll just pull that in, down, straight, and grab this one, and get a nice curve there. Make sure that it stays relatively straight before it starts to curve down. That should be fine. And same thing here. I think this bend needs to be just a little bit more. So I'm holding Alt, directing just the one side so I don't affect the other. Hold Command. I can move this point individually like so. And so on and so forth. So Command to move the points. You can move the Bezier's just by simply clicking on them. And... Oops, I'm sorry, if you're still in this point method, it's going to change the uh, bezier altogether. So we'll just hold Alt and adjust this curve, and then hold Alt and adjust this curve, and Command to adjust the position of the point. Space bar to move the screen. And you can see I'm staying right on this tool the entire time. I don't have to um, go on and off the tool and reselect. So command to select the point, move that around. And then Alt if I want to set, uh, select just the one side. Command if I select the point. So it's pretty straightforward and that's essentially how I do half of the lampshade. And from here the beauty of this tool is this, that you can now create um, selections from it you can fill it uh, now keep in mind that the quality of your fill and selection is going to be determined by your resolution on your canvas i'm working at 9 by 16 at 300 dpi so now if i take this make sure i'm on a new layer which i am i can right click go to fill path make sure i'm on black there hit ok and i got my um, half lamp shape filled in really quickly uh, deselect the path by clicking the gray area here, go back to my layer, I can simply hold Alt, drag this over, edit, transform, flip horizontal, move that back, oh goodness, look at that, alright, no worries, I can fix that, <laughs> and that shows me how bad my symmetry abilities are, um, but to fix that I'm just going to go edit, transform, skew, I'll go ahead and pull that to center. I probably should have drew a center line first as I started. Edit, transform, skew on the other layer. And bring those together. There we go. Starting to get there. And still a little bit off. Like I think the neck of the lamp should be thinner up here. So I'll repeat that process. And, you know, I wanted to use a very simple shape to show you the, the use of the tool. But this really works with everything. And the other thing that this uh, tool will allow you to do is there's actually a number of effects that allow you to do. You know, I got some bad little problem there at the uh, base of the lamp as well. Um, is that it will also allow you to stroke the path as well. So basically, I'll get rid of my sketch there. I'll move my little lamp over for now. And I'll go back to the pass. Now, say, oh, that's our, our uh, geometric version there. Okay, so say I go back to this and I want to add a stroke path to this. Whatever brush I'm on, uh, let's try it with this with uh, Shape Dynamics, see what it does. I can simply go back onto the pen tool, right click on the screen, and you know you can make it a selection if you want, uh, which is helpful. Um, you really don't need to when you've got the, uh, the shape already built. You can use that as a selection as well. Uh, you can also go to Stroke Path. Uh, use the current brush, simulate pressure on on or off if you want. We'll try both. And if you notice what it did, I'll select off the path. It started from the beginning point, I believe anyways. Not sure where it designates as uh, beginning in. 
and it's simulating pressure as it goes through on one path. So we probably don't want that. I'll go back, go back to our path, right click, go to stroke path again, and this time taking simulate pressure off, hit OK, and now we've got a, a pretty consistent line around there. Now as far as the opacity of it, let's go back to our brush, and that's the reason I had the opacity low. Turn that all the way up and try it again. So I recommend playing with the brushes that you have in the various settings and seeing what these uh, you know, effects will yield. Um, stroke path again, hit OK. And there we've got a pretty decent line work to it. Hit Enter, and we'll zoom up again on the clarity, but keeping in mind that the clarity is, this is a raster image, so the closer you get, the more it's gonna blur, and that's gonna be dependent on the quality of the resolution of the screen and canvas that you're using. So it's not a vector-based uh, graphic like Illustrator or something like that. But the same rules kind of apply other than the fact that it's not vector-based. So yeah, so that's uh, there's a couple of the you know features that you can use. Now once you get to the point where you've got a solid shape, the reason why I wanted to make sure to uh, show you this is this is really useful for painting. So you basically would lock transparency here, and you can start painting away on your lampshade and not have to worry about going outside of the confinements of your painting. So once transparency is locked, you can grab whatever, you know, whatever brush you want to use. Um, I usually turn the opacity down on this one if I use it this way. And you just start painting in some, some light source and, and figuring out the shape of this. But it becomes a lot easier because, you know, you've already got the shape to find the silhouette. And uh, now all you have to do is drop in some, some paint pretty quickly. You know, and you can fix things like, you know, that bend that I've got here that's not entirely accurate. And you just keep working through your artwork that way. So, say I need to even fix this bend here. If I had to, I could just take the pen and path tool again, uh, create a new path. Keeping in mind, these paths save over here, which just really streamlines your work. As you get into a complex painting, uh, you can go back and edit really quickly and on the fly. So, you simply go here, you know, drag down to here. And again, I'll finish here, but then I'll pull just a little bit to finish that curve. And I could simply go, well, actually, let me end that curve first. Hold Alt. Click there. Click here. Click here. And finish there. Um, and then I can go back and zoom in here. Take the pen tool. Hold Command. Now, a lot of times, people are going to look at something like this and go... Well, why would you go through all that? Couldn't you just paint a pretty decent lamp? Uh, not worrying about all the little refinement that you're doing. Um, you know, and that's true, you can. But keep in mind that certain jobs are going to require um, more of a level of detail. And although I'm just using a lamp as the initial subject matter, it's not necessarily what I'm directing you towards. If you're working on a cool science fiction, techie painting, there's going to be areas where you want things a bit tighter. Uh, you're not going to want to probably do this to the entire painting, but certain areas it does make sense. So, if you're wondering. If if that even needed explaining. But <laughs> I tried to think about uh, what people might be thinking as they're watching this video. Alright, so there's the, uh, the shape uh, that I want to use to fix this. And again, I could just, with the pen tool, I can right click. Uh, I could fill it, or I could just go make selection. I'll go ahead and just make a selection. I'll go back to my layer, and this is the one I'm painting on. I'll unlock transparency. I'll hit X to flip back to the brush there. Turn the opacity all the way up. And I'll just go ahead and fill this like that. And I'll fix that little bit of a shape. And I'll hit Command D, deselect. And then I'll lock transparency again, and then go right back to my painting. And, you know, start painting my ugly lamp here again. So that's about it. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can use the pen and pad tool. There's lots of ways to use it. Uh, they don't have to be uh, full-filled shapes either. You can just kind of drag and make curvatures and then stroke uh, the path and, and make a cool line on there just by right-clicking, stroke path. Uh, we'll simulate pressure on that one. Um, oh, I'm on a very light gray. Uh, so you really just have to play with it and see what type of effect... Uh, it yields. Again, one last thing to keep in mind, all the different brushes are going to react to it um, in different ways as well. So you want to test whatever custom brushes you have and uh, see how that works as well. So 
little stroke path, simulate pressure. Oh, and you know why it's doing that? I have locked transparency set. Excuse me. Try it again. There we go. And then hit enter to release. So yeah. At any rate, hopefully that's helped you. I appreciate you uh, tuning in and watching the videos. If you like them, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future, and uh, that's what I'll work on. As always, thanks for watching and tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Bye for now.